Well, hello, Brie James here with Dr. Elizabeth Jackson, our obstetrician expert. I've got the word out, amazing. I think I'm getting better already. You're great. <laughs> so basically, you're pregnant now. You've had a good time and you're having a baby. Congratulations, that's very exciting for you. <laughs> um, so now you've got to make some decisions and this is where a lot of mums come unstuck, a lot of mums and dads, is should I go private or should I go public? Mm. What is your views on this? <laughs> um, well, the great news is in Australia, public and private both have great outcomes. So um, you can't make a wrong choice, but uh, in making a choice, there are some differences. So usually in a public system, your delivery will be with a midwife. Um, if there's complications, you will escalate through a team of doctors, starting with junior doctors, and working your way up to a consultant obstetrician. Um, and uh, the contrast to that is the private system where you choose your obstetrician and that obstetrician is with you throughout the pregnancy and at the birth. So if there are complications, you have the same person that's able to do both your normal delivery as well as if you need a forceps or a vacuum delivery for example and finally an emergency caesar. Um, and there are some more flexible arrangements that are able to be achieved in private, um, including the timing of delivery. So if um, you were looking for an elective section, for example, there's a bit more flexibility arranging that in the private system, or even an elective induction of labour, you know, as you get closer to your due date, um, 39, 40 weeks, for example, in the public system it is a little bit uh, closer to 42 weeks, and about 41 and a half weeks is when you can look to have an elective induction, induction in the public system. Nice. So um, how do you choose an obstetrician then? What's the best way to go about it? It's kind of like picking your friends. So it's um, preferences in it's terms of... Really nice way to look at it. <laughs> well, it is. It is. It's, um, you match up in terms of personality styles, um, availability occasionally, um, and also financially that can be a, a, an issue as well when coming to choose um, an obstetrician. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, if you start out by choosing model of care, then you um, graduate on to um, choosing your you were to go private to choose an obstetrician. Because it, it is a pretty intimate sort of um, yeah. experience in your life. So having yeah. someone that you like and trust and sort of yeah. like your BFF at the end of it. Yeah, and, and as the care provider, you develop really close relationships with your obstetric patients. Um, and my patients are my age, they're like me, they've got similar life circumstances as well. Um, I'm a mother of two small children um, and I elected to go private with my deliveries and form very close relationships with my obstetricians, um, absolutely adored them and had very positive, wonderful experiences. And when you're bringing your baby into the world with um, a, a team of people that you know and you trust, it's, it makes it for a, a, a very special occasion. Yeah. So some obstetricians have extra services mm -hmm. um, to offer, so it's not just you know uh, the standard checking and things like that. What mm. are some of the ones that are on service, I guess? Yeah, so um, we have in our clinic, we have our private midwife, and our private midwife um, is also an eligible midwife, which means that she is able to um, see you independently of me, even at certain visits in your pregnancy. Um, she can do home visits. Um, uh, also, we offer, for example, a lactation service. So there's different obstetricians may have, as part of their care package, um, different uh, resources available to women as well. Because some of them can do the blood test so you don't have to go anywhere else yeah, and do right. the ultrasound so you don't have to go anywhere else yeah. as well. Yeah, that's um, true. So all of them are different. but They are. Yeah, which yeah. is great. So often, if you're choosing someone, look at those extra services. Yeah. Another great tip. Yeah. Um, so a big concern for some mums is that they have this great relationship with their obstetrician, um, and they've built this rapport and they're supposed to be at the birth and then something happens and they're not. What's the like? Like that's a, probably the biggest fear. Yeah. Um, it's pretty rare that that happens though, is that right? Yeah, it's pretty uncommon actually. Um, people do have a, a fear of that, but uh, if I look over the last two and a half years, I, I haven't been there for five births. Yeah. And so overall in the scheme of things, that's a very low probability of missing a, one of my uh, patients' births. Um, but the the reality is that, uh, especially in a place like Cairns, as a private obstetrician, you're on call 24-7 for your women. Um, we share an on-call roster on a weekend so that we do have a little bit of time to attend conferences and spend time with the family as well. So um, we have uh, an arrangement that leads to maybe having six out of uh, six days of the month where you're not on call 24-7 for your patients. So overall, actually, those numbers are um, very likely in your favour that your obstetrician will be at your birth. And in the absence of your obstetrician, the thing is that your birth isn't so much about your obstetrician, it's about you and your family and um, all of the obstetricians I know completely respect that and um, we understand that you want your obstetrician 
to be the one at your birth and there's a, a close relationship as I mentioned that you form. So the, um, the absence of your obstetrician doesn't define your birth experience uh, and you are taken care of by trusted colleagues um, uh, that are able to provide a similar service. So congratulations once again uh, on having you know your, your first pregnancy or second pregnancy or tenth whatever. Um, congratulations. We hope this video helps you decide whether to go private or public and what to do next uh, in that situation. But congratulations. Uh, make sure you watch some more of these videos to get more helpful advice.